Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this session. Um, it's about Ansible console, how to debug many nodes in an emergency or not. Um, the idea and all the slides are done by my colleague, Pierre Blanc, who is unfortunately preferred to run marathon than coming to the conference. So you are stuck with me here for today. Uh, let's uh, jump right into the talk. So here is Pierre. You don't see him today, but you could always join him by email if you have um, any follow-up questions. Uh, today's agenda is uh, about a short story of uh, appearance of Ansible console, how to install it, how to use, and uh, some benefits that you could get out of it. So in short, it's a console for executing Ansible task. Uh, it's an open source project, and it's another way to consume Ansible modules. You could uh, uh, have immediate usage as with ad hoc commands. Uh, it's perfect for occasional or urgent use, and uh, the re really great feature, it allows you all bash uh, shortcuts. And I will uh, show it off in uh, some moments. So a bit of history. Ansible Shell was written by another C vocal, so known as Dominis. And uh, his first contribution are of uh, 2013, so Ansible uh, appeared in 2012. So uh, the need of uh, having something like uh, Ansible Shell uh, was immediately here. And uh, it uh, became a part of uh, uh, Ansible code uh, in uh, 2016 after the acquisition of Ansible by Red Hat. Uh, it's uh, a part of official Ansible project since version 2.1. Uh, so it's included in Ansible code, so how to install it. Uh, it's easy, you have it uh, with RPMs, uh, the same way as you have uh, Ansible Doc, Ansible Galaxy, or Ansible Playbook. It's really easy, it's uh, all in here. Uh, so concerning the place uh, in Ansible ecosystem, okay, here it's really simplified, but what I want to show you on this slide is that uh, it's uh, basically the same access uh, to collections, modules, and plugins as uh, Ansible ad hoc has. But it has some additional benefits in comparison to ad hoc. So let's compare them both. So ad hoc to allows you to use a module to perform a single task. Okay, so no history. Uh, Ansible console allows you to execute multiple tasks and it keeps the state of the previously executed task. So it's um, more uh, uh, extended usage in comparison with uh, the ad hoc. So let's uh, jump uh, into the execution. Uh, so you execute it uh, exactly as um, the same way as Ansible. You are providing the inventory. And uh, here we have the typical prompt. Okay, so what, what do we see here? Here we see a username demo. We see uh, all groups selected. We see uh, 20 nodes and we see 10 forks, uh, forks if you want to run a parallel execution. Uh, so what we could do with inventories here, we could uh, list selected nodes, list available groups and uh, select a group of all our nodes. Uh, we do it like this, uh, so here we list uh, all the groups, backend, frontend, and ungrouped. Uh, we select frontend, and uh, we list uh, three meshes that are in frontend. We could also come back and select all the meshes, or we could just uh, select only backend and list uh, two backend meshes. We could just uh, select one mesh, and uh, you see the number of meshes selected is displayed right here in the console, so as the first um, uh, part. <laughs> so again, uh, we are coming back to all, and uh, we are having all five meshes, uh, three uh, frontends and two backends selected right here. Uh, we could also list available groups, uh, and uh, then the rest of the part I already showed you here. Uh, so let's jump into the usage. So what we could do as a simple thing, first of all, we could just execute an Ansible task. Uh, so let's install HTTP v server on every uh, front-end mesh. Uh, so what we could do here, uh, we could first narrow down our group to the front-end, okay? So instead of five meshes, we just keep here three front-end meshes, and then we execute an Ansible task to install 
httpd server on uh, each of them and um, uh, so here is the result uh, nothing to do the everything is already installed okay so that's how you execute unstable task with the help of console let's go to a more extensive usage what is good about unstable console is that you can use facts okay so here is uh, how you can get facts and uh, here is uh, how you could uh, just uh, check out uh, uh, these facts. So again, uh, here we are executing Ansible command, but uh, now we are using the fact that we governed right before. Uh, so we just discussed uh, sort of Ansible usage of the console. Let's now jump to a shell uh, usage. So it's not only Ansible commands that are available here. The great thing is that you have also shell available. And uh, I will show you that also actually you could combine both. So for the moment, let's just uh, check out uh, shell. So again, we are uh, in the front end group and um, we are just displaying a, a, a Linux release that uh, I installed. Um, and uh, we also could uh, force the execution by using the exclamation mark if needed. Okay. Uh, so we discussed um, uh, Ansible usage, we discussed shell usage, and now here is the more important slide in this presentation. Let's discuss the combination of both, how we could use uh, Ansible facts uh, within the shell command. So here it's uh, a bit in the middle of uh, the GIF, so let's uh, just wait in the beginning. Uh, so what, um, uh, what we could do here is that we, we could um, basically execute uh, the facts governing, okay, and get uh, the facts for all the machines, okay. So now what we are going to do, we are going to execute a shell command, okay. So we are going to check um, the content of slash etcd slash mod cd file. And here is the best part. So we are combining here shell command uh, with the Ansible variables, which is retrieved uh, from before. So you see we are uh, keeping history. We are using Ansible facts that were retrieved by Ansible commands, and we are using it within the shell command. So it's really great. You have a huge uh, flexibility. So you have really a combination of shell and Ansible and goodies from the boss within one part. Shell, Ansible, and you are keeping history of the previous command. So it's really great. Uh, it's uh, something that uh, I really want to promote. So this is the most important fact of the presentation. This is what I wanted to, uh, to pitch here. Um, so then uh, if we just speak about uh, how to start, uh, um, Ansible console provides you an interactive help, so you could um, uh, basically check uh, the syntaxes of each command, you could check the execution, and uh, you could uh, easily get uh, a help uh, and uh, auto-complete with uh, every modules. Uh, so here is uh, the demo. So uh, for example, I want to get a help of the copy command, and I display what, uh, what it could be done, and uh, I also want to get uh, an autocomplete, and uh, here is uh, how it goes. Okay. Uh, so let's go to some bonuses. It's like real um, quick highlights that I personally like here. So what you could do, you could exclude a node from the selection. So it's really handy if you want, for example, to debug all nodes except one uh, in which you are really sure. You could use uh, become option, okay? Be careful with that, but uh, you can. And uh, you could uh, really um, trim a number of used forks. Uh, so if you want execution one by one and no parallelization, just use uh, fork one. If you want uh, to run everything in parallel, you could use a lot of forks. And uh, also the story of your execution is uh, right here, Ansible console history. So if you want to check out what was done, you could. And uh, let's jump into the conclusion. Uh, so it's easy to access, fast and intuitive. It's uh, improved ad hoc commands. So what you get in plus in comparison with ad hoc, you have um, history, you have uh, Ansible variables, you have uh, uh, multiple tasks. Um, it's uh, really convenient for one-time interventions like testing and uh, debugging. It could uh, easily replace uh, softwares like uh, 
cluster SSH, PSSH, and so on, uh, because of its combination of shell and uh, Ansible usage. Uh, so here you have uh, links uh, to the source code uh, and uh, to some resources. And here is a quote from the creator of the console. Uh, so I hope uh, no one accidentally <laughs> nuked the entire infrastructure with it. And uh, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for the attention, guys. Um, you have um, uh, five minutes for the questions. Let me just go back to the most um, uh, important slide of the presentation and <laughs> Um, here you go. Uh, this one. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can we use console to put some module that were uh, I would be developing? I can write in a custom module for Ansible. Can I invoke it in the console? Or do I have to wire it somewhere, in some way to be able to call it? I'm not really sure, to be honest. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I think if uh, once you publish the collection as official Ansible collection, for sure you can. Okay. At, uh, if 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 you can it during development, this I don't know exactly. I'm not really into Ansible development lifecycle. Uh, you could ask Pierre. I'm sorry for not having answer for that. No, no, no so. problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. The, 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 sorry, I will repeat. Uh, so the question was uh, how uh, it's distinguished between Ansible commands and shell commands. Uh, okay, in some uh, obvious situations, uh, as with variables, um, uh, you have uh, Ansible syntax right in here. Uh, and uh, I imagine that you could uh, enforce Ansible syntax uh, using the quotes. But to be honest, uh, I'm not really uh, sure about uh, really tiny situations, then uh, the names uh, could be uh, could be mixed up. What uh, from what I've seen in the usage, uh, uh, it's basically first tries to interpret as shell, and then uh, it tries to interpret as Ansible if um, it's not available. But again, uh, I'm afraid I'm not. Uh, I don't know the exact answer in uh, all uh, the tricky situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, do you have any other questions? We still have some time. Do not hesitate. There is also email of Pierre on the first slide of the presentation. So if you have like really in-depth question to which I'm sorry I did not reply today, you could reach out to him directly. So he's a really good guy and he could provide you really in-depth uh, expertise on the subject. Um, no questions? I think you are good then. Thank you so much.